Welcome to Slow and Steady, the podcast where you get to follow along as we build products in public. Each week we'll give you an honest peek into our lives as we share our struggles, our wins and everything in between. I'm Benedict and I'm feeling exhausted. I'm Benedicta and today is August 3rd. This is episode number 102 and I'm feeling relieved. Ah, why are I relieved? What's, why what's am I on? relieved? We're going to do you first. <laughs> well, I, I want to know. <laughs> you want to know. It's actually on the personal side of things. There are some personal stuff, family stuff that has just like worked itself out. As I shared earlier, my mom just got diagnosed with Alzheimer, which is still bad, of course, but there are like financial stuff that worked itself out. So that is making me very relieved. And then also... The pirate princess that we now call her, or the intern who's six, <laughs> uh, just started kind of summer school, like official start of school is in two weeks, but she started yesterday. So this morning I have had the house all to myself, supercharging on the couch. Um, so I'm feeling like there is a margin back in my life and also that kind of relief from the financial situation. So That's I don't know, life... News. Life is good. <laughs> when does school, like, does school in Norway usually start in August, mid-August? Yeah, so, or end of August. So it's two weeks, it's like official school start, but it's like a thing they've started with, in Oslo at least, it's where the uh, kind of like the after-school care program that they have in, in Norway, they also open that for a couple of weeks during the summer so that parents don't have to take like a full eight weeks off just because mm. the kids have eight weeks off. So there is in Oslo, there's even like this summer camp that the city provides that you can apply to. And um, after you started school, so Lillian didn't have that this summer. Um, but then uh, they open up the after school care program, which is then full day <laughs> care program, <laughs> I guess, uh, two weeks before the school starts. And what's nice about that is they get to kind of just like play around kind of like in kindergarten and get to know their fellow uh, first graders but it's also a little weird because like where's the like i was like are, are we celebrating first day of this thing or are we celebrating the first day of school like when because it's more like a gradual thing while i remember mm -hmm. very much school being like first day of school like you're in the schoolyard you almost haven't been there before it's like a big thing but i mean they're more mindful of like easing kids into things these days which, which is good but i'm like what what is when are we celebrating i love to celebrate so yeah <laughs> so what do you decide on when are you going to celebrate we are celebrating on the first day of school i think we haven't gotten the information yet but i think there's like a ceremony at the school and mm. then we're gonna i'm actually gonna order a cake and then we'll like have a big thing in our backyard and be like wait <laughs> school yeah girl. it's a big milestone it is oh my god she's so big it's it's it's, it's crazy um it's yeah it's just like a really weird feeling that she's now in school <laughs> yeah um, just a few more blinks and she will be out out the house and like living on her own <laughs> yeah and in between there there's gonna be some like teenage years and some <laughs> hanging with the bad crowd no probably not or maybe who knows we live in the who knows city. we'll see we live in the inner city. Anything can happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. Well, or not nice. We'll see. I mean, <laughs> keep us posted for the next. Like, keep, I mean, we're going to so. be doing this for the next. So you, you'll you'll know what the pirate princess is up to. <laughs> She'll be like, "Mom, stop talking about me on that podcast." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just want to keep doing my update then, since you tricked me into starting. Sure, why not? <laughs> why not? So, uh, also, a little bit of the relief, I guess, is that uh, last week was my most intense week as Queen Ray. <laughs> um, I had uh, the regular webinar on Tuesdays that I managed to schedule a little close to these um, to these ses sessions, uh, but they are now later in the evening, so I'm going to do one today. Uh, but anyways, I did one on Tuesday and then uh, on Thursday, I was doing a security um, webinar with uh, staff, the security staff engineer, Mike from Gatsby, and he could do it. So he's in the uh, East Coast 
East Coast US, but we ended up doing like eight my time, eight, eight o'clock at night for a webinar. And in my mind, it was going to be like an hour, hour and a half. He had prepared some security vulnerabilities that you often see in web applications. And then we were fixing them on the webinar. So he kind of talked me through fixing these issues. And it ended up being three hours on the dot. Wow. So I was live coding and like asking him questions and responding to the chat for three hours. So that was super fun, but like super intense. I was so tired on um, Friday. Uh, and then just coding for three hours is exhausting. Uh, like yes, intense coding for three hours, but then like doing it on air, answering the chat. I can imagine that. Yeah, and then I ran out of water. Right <laughs> and then I was like, well, and then I couldn't see. That's the thing. I couldn't go go straight to bed. Like, because, you know, like the, like artists, yeah. like musicians, I had to like, you know, calm down after the show. True, true. <laughs> so I ended up like eating some, you know, eating some stuff and just like chatting with Ula and, and yeah, just spending, spending some time to wind down. So I think it was like midnight before I went to bed, which is late in for me um now that i've become like a you know boring family person uh <laughs> like student benedict would be like midnight is late but uh that was 10 years ago anyway so friday i was uh you know i was really working on charging or resting uh again and then we went with our uh gatsby deep dive stream on friday night where we did same of some of the um, well, not some some same stuff, but we we did a, a Gatsby function with the regular Yang, um, but that was like three, three, well, one hour, one hour. So that was five hours altogether of live streaming last week. So that was a little ah. intense. <laughs> yeah, that sounds a little bit intense. That's true, but so much fun. So that's the thing is uh, we've been talking about with my like some Gatsby summer functions that uh, is that I still I like I do. St- so much enjoy all of the activities so if i can just like make this into something a little bit bigger with a little bit more money coming in it's absolutely worth it because i enjoy it so much but it is like energy it consumes a lot of energy so there needs yeah. to be some financial reward as well <laughs> yeah for sure how's the response like the public response to the the security webinar was one of the free webinars you, mm-hmm. you provided as an add-on, right? How's the yeah. response to those in general? Are people signing up for them or? Yeah, so a lot of people, well, not, for me, a lot of people signed up. I can't, I think it was like 20, no. By now it's like 25 or something because the good thing is about these webinars is that people can keep on signing up, signing up right after and a couple of days, like whenever they want and see the replay, it's available at the exact same URL. So that works really well. So I think we had nine people watching uh, most of the stream. I know that like a lot. I, yeah, I, I I can't remember the exact numbers, but there were people there for the whole three hours, which I wow. find amazing. And, and people were logging off. It was like, this has been super cool. Like my mind is blown. And some people said like, I had to go back and rewrite everything I've ever done in my career. <laughs> Uh, and there was a lot of support on Twitter as well. So I don't know how many people, there's a special vibe to being there live, right? Because you can ask questions and it feels, it you kind of want to stay on. So it's going to be interesting to see how many people actually watch it when they sign up after the fact. But I plan on, when I have some more time, uh, to download it and then edit because it was like six vulnerabilities and then take those six vulnerabilities and make them into shorter, uh, not very edited, but just like a little bit more edited videos and put those up on YouTube so that you can just see one one vulnerability uh, at a time. Uh, and I think that could be good kind of marketing wise, both for me and, and for, for Gatsby. So um so I will just have to make some time for that because I don't think I can, I have an editor for my vlogs, but I don't know if she would know what to keep in and take out of kind of the technical parts. She could trim all the silences, but I think it would be hard for her to kind of like cut out actual pieces of content. So I'll have to see how I want to do that. Might be worth a try just asking her to 
try to do it and if it doesn't work out you at least maybe have something to work with yeah i could also maybe ask her to just do all of those things like all the silences and all of the mistakes and and a little bit of guidance there and then i could go through and like take out chunks if there are chunks that are not really a part of what we're talking about so um but anyway, so with all of my margins and everything back in you know my life and, and school <laughs> starting and all of that, I have now decided to spring for the Jonathan Stark private coaching. So I Ooh. will start when Lillian starts school, I will start school <laughs> or Stark <laughs> school uh, to kind of work on the Queen uh, Ray bus business. And then I will keep doing POW as my side hustle. Nice, nice. So what's the plan? Is like take uh, summer functions and make it into a Gatsby course or are you still undecided or I, I think that's what I'm supposed to figure out <laughs> in this program. <laughs> um right now the plan is that I wanna do um more I wanna do some custom Gatsby projects. But not, I don't want to just make people websites, but I would like to make plugins for people. So, or for mm -hmm. projects. So if they have a Gatsby project and they have some kind of old backend they need to integrate with, then I would like to make that like plug an integration specifically for their use case. At least kind of give them the first version and then the in-house dev team could keep on working on that. But I think it could benefit uh, teams to have somebody who has a lot of Gatsby knowledge to kind of make that first version so that they can get off on the kind of right foot. Is that an English expression as well? Anyway. Um, so some kind of plugin as a service, but the whole thing with Stark is that not to build by the hour. So that's how I'm going to figure <laughs> out how to package this so that I can sell it. So that would be more like in-house, but then it could also be say, some service, yes, yeah, say user list, once a Gatsby example, how to integrate with user list, then like I could be the one making that demo or that example for a service that don't really have Gatsby experience, but want to showcase how to integrate with Gatsby. Uh, so that kind of works, because I think that is um, kind of higher value work and also stuff that I like. And then I can take all the things I learn and experience from those things and funnel into webinars and courses and classes and, and those kinds of things. But I would like to have that famous product ladder thing You've probably seen floating around the internet. Yeah. Uh, how are you planning to <laughs> acquire those customers or get those projects? Well, that's what I have to figure out. <laughs> okay <laughs> no i think um i think i think that's a lot of the point with this product ladder philosophy thing is that you have lower price things like the web webinars like summer functions even though that wasn't that cheap but like you have different types of of products and if i want in-house dev teams to hire me for these higher ticket things it would be nice if they get to know me through this kind of lower price things and they might so if they suddenly need to do Gatsby project at work maybe they'll join some of my things that I don't really know what will be yet but then they'll join some of that and then if they like my approach and kind of start to trust me and then they can also see that oh but I can help you jumpstart the internal plugin or your demo or something like that then I could do that for them and then maybe even have an internal workshop with the team where they kind of get up and running um, themselves but then where to kind of like what to focus on how many things in the ladder uh, which offering to go with first that's coming back to what we talked about last week where I just need somebody on my side that actually invests some time into what I want to do and my strategy and my tactics and all of that so that I can go and talk to that person when I need need to and kind of get some solid advice, not just like, you know, general advice, but more specific advice, I guess. Yeah. So that's why I'm now springing from the private coaching. I'm super curious to hear how this plays out in the long run. Yeah. Because everyone wanted somebody like that last week. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, yeah, we'll see. It's it's going to be interesting. Uh, and I hope it helps kind of jumpstart this. I've tried different things before and I kind of, I can see the skeleton or like the outline of what this can be. But it's nice to have somebody that can maybe help me um, prioritize, I guess, mostly. Mm-hmm. Because I always want to do all the things and then you say yes to too much and then none of it actually works out yeah, as well as yeah, it should, right? True. Yeah. And I also yeah. have a lead already for a plugin. I will. Nice. <laughs> I will announce that in two weeks <laughs> or, or whenever cool. I close them or whenever they say no, I promise to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Um, this will be like for Gatsby in general, not just like Gatsby functions related, right? Yes, but I do really want to focus on integration. So either get into integration with other services through functions or integration to other services through plugins. It's not, I don't want to make fancy front end web demos. Like that is not my specialty. I have always been really good at, I usually say it like duct taping together services to create, um, you know, prototypes or web applications, uh, side projects, you know. So that is like where my strength is and also where I, I have the most fun. I realized I don't want it to be ugly though, because I can't work on stuff that is like ugly. But um, my strength is more in figuring out how to integrate. And like I, if somebody has like a really poorly bad art uh, documented CMS that they need to create a plugin for, like I doing that research and like figuring out how it's been done and how we can integrate with that, that is stuff that I really enjoy. I would be really embarrassed if I was the one making it and not making the documentation good. But if there is no documentation and it's not my fault, I think it's really fun to try to figure those things out. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's true. Being kind of like a detective. What happens if I call like, maybe the end point is this. Well, who knows? Let's test it out. <laughs> See what results we're getting back. You know, why does my client have five extra counties in Norway when the official count is five less? <laughs> Let's figure out what happened. Those kinds of things. I think that is um, a lot of fun. So if I can get paid to do that and then take some of the pressure off the internal dev team, then that could be yeah. fun and valuable, I think, which is the most important, right? It has to be valuable Agreed. for the customer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, nice. So that's, that's going to happen in two weeks, right? So uh, yeah, I'm going to book my, you know, first client in two weeks going to just be like, <laughs> so the coaching is four months because that is what okay. he's found to be what it takes to kind of build up the authority and the product ladder and the systems and mm-hmm. and those kinds of things so slow and steady yeah nice that's me yeah so on on my side um we launched a zapier integration last week uh, at least made the official announcement um i think it the reception was pretty good like a lot of people shared it tweeted about it and stuff like that of course, like the day after someone sends an email uh, asking about a specific use case they want to solve, and they're like, yeah, just do this and this and this. And they try it, and of course, it doesn't work. <laughs> so, uh, in Zapier specifically after, or in your API? Yeah, in Zapier specifically, because I there was one use case I didn't really consider when, when building the actions. So I had to <laughs> go back in there and make some changes. But uh, I mean, I guess that's a good thing. I mean, getting feedback and then improving it. So that's what I did last week. Um, Do you get that little badge we talked about last time? You know, first feature bug. That could be a badge. <laughs> yeah, that could be a badge. That's very true. <laughs> um, yeah. So on the, I also worked on the forms a little bit, um, but honestly, I didn't get as far as I wanted. Uh, one aspect of that was that um, Jane was work, still working on the designs for it. So I wasn't quite sure what it's going to look and how it's going to work like. Um, and that's always, I'm always a little bit hesitant to put too much work into it because in the end, like it comes out totally different than what I think it should be. And I uh, didn't want to rewrite everything. But um, yeah, we now have a concept and a design for it. And um so my goal for this week is to finally finish it and, and publish it. Let's see how it goes. Um, so these would be forms I could uh, embed on my site? 
Yeah, that's the goal. Um, so we have like in the UI a, a small form builder where you can like define what forms are in there, and then you should get some code that you can embed or like a JavaScript snippet that you can paste in somewhere, um, and then re- that would include include the form. So you do need bit... you do need my Gatsby demo services, maybe, <laughs> <laughs> or plugin plugin services, maybe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, while you were talking about it, I was actually thinking about like, is this something we could use? And I'm still not entirely sure, but I mean, once we have that part, like the forms and stuff, it probably makes more sense to do integration with something like Gatsby. So we'll see. Um, yeah, but that's that's the thing I'm working on. Um, and then something interesting happened last week. And I'm not entirely sure, like this ha- seems to happen from time to time and it's um, we get support requests in waves, and like sometimes there's almost nothing, and then suddenly they are all like sending sending support requests, and we have to deal with a lot of stuff at once. And within the last seven days or so, three of our customers stumbled across like the same limitation for some reason. Like it's been a limitation that's been around for us basically forever, and it wasn't a problem. But this week, like three customers independently of each other got caught up in it and i'm i don't i don't know why it's a conspiracy (laughs) (laughs) yeah but like how why does this happen like in 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 ways like this i it's nothing we changed it's nothing that surfaced recently or, or is a new thing or that i accidentally broke it's always been there but now it's a problem. <laughs> and I, I don't remember I don't remember my statistics, but I remember there being some weird like explanation about why things cluster. Like that is more it's like more normal than not or something. Like there will always yeah. be somebody with the same birthday in the room. Mm-hmm. Um more I often than that not. Lecture There's, as well. <laughs> exactly. There were some lectures on this. <laughs> well, you know, when I'm gonna clear out my attic so sometime this fall, then we'll see if I can find the book and we can like look it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe it's just like a weird coincidence. But um triggered by that, I looked into like lifting that limitation so to make it more concrete like we have this condition builder in our ui where you can like define filters for the lists and conditions for automations and conditions for segments and stuff like that and it it doesn't really know about the data data types you're comparing so it always assumes it's a string and then we try to do some guessing based on the property names so for example um, we try to take like, dates based on if they end in at or on or recently added because of you date. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we show like the date comparison UI and stuff like that. And I'd really, really love to change this. So it's not like trying to guess it from the names or, but looking at the actual values in the database. Like the first time we send data over, we detect, ah, oh, this looks like a date. We remember, okay, this property is the date, and then all the UI elements update automatically. But the way we implemented our filter UI uh, basically doesn't allow us to, well, like the data structure below doesn't have any idea about data types. And loading, like figuring out the data types based on property names or like the properties on the server is an asynchronous. Uh, operation in the UI and then suddenly everything has to be asynchronous and deal with promises and long running requests and stuff like that so it means we have to basically rebuild the entire filter UI for this (laughs) so I'm not entirely sure like this but what's the problem they come over because you said this to be more specific and you explained that it's all strings and you uh, so what are the limitations that they are experiencing, these customers? Yeah, the customers want to compare dates, but mm-hmm. because they are not adhering to the naming scheme, because, mm-hmm. I mean, it's somewhere in the documentation, yeah, but, like, <laughs> who reads the documentation, right? So they they send something <laughs> in with whatever name and then are confused why it doesn't 
show like the correct comparison. Um, I see. Like, we usually reply with something like, um, yeah, we know this is a limitation. Here's what you can do to fix it. But it involves like changing stuff on their side. And that kind of kind of sucks, especially like if they're just getting set up, it's, it's not that big of a deal because they can just change it. But if it's like their legacy setup that they used for the last 12 years, <laughs> um, it's like not a, not an easy ask for them to uh, to change the naming scheme or something like that. So I was look as I said, was looking into just finding a quick solution, but I wasn't able to come up with anything. So this this might be a week long project of like working this, reworking this. But then again, is it worth spending so much time on a feature that no like People notice it now because it's not working like they expect it to, but spending a week on it to fix it will basically make it a feature they never realize that that's there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so someone asked on Twitter, will it move the needle? And I was like, yeah, no. This will no, probably yeah, not no. move the needle. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, I'd still like to fix it because it would be really cool to do it properly. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's your that's your engineer mindset, not your business owner mindset. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's hard to balance the two. Very hard. <laughs> <laughs> that is probably the good thing about being an engineer and a maker is that you can make anything. But I think the the benefit of being a non-technical <laughs> business um, owner or founder is that you can make those decisions maybe a little bit less um, engineering in the engineering way. Like they could be like, no, this doesn't move the needle and not like feel like, but we should do it because that would be the proper database schema thing or whatever. <laughs> like they can yeah. make decisions without like feeling bad for their craft. But then obviously they have other things that they probably have to. Um... Yeah. Like as a non-technical founder, I feel like, well, I don't have first an experience, but I feel like estimating the amount of work and effort and like stuff like that is probably harder than it is for a technical founder because then you come up with a nice feature and don't realize that it well but this is basically one of those examples like mm -hmm. it sounds easy enough to fix that limitation like mm. just show the correct filter types and uh, comparison types, but like. You have no idea that it's actually a big <laughs> task that takes like a week or so. Yeah. 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 Well, anyways, um, I made some experiments with the live streams last week. Um, cool. Because I got some, like, I got some feedback from people that um, they didn't notice that the live stream was happening when I tried to announce it on Twitter and stuff like that people still miss it and then notice it after the fact and stuff like that. So one of my friends suggested that we, uh, or that I just like do some live streaming on Twitter directly. So it like shows up in their feed with a ni nice icon and stuff like that. And with the recent format change of like going longer and like not having a time limit, I also tried to try Twitch and, um, yeah, basically set up Restream IO to to stream to YouTube, to Twitch, to Facebook, and to Twitter. And I don't have any results yet, but this time I had five viewers, uh, whereas like the week before I had one. <laughs> so maybe it helped. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe not. Um, but yeah, I keep just just keep experimenting with this because. Well, yeah, no results so far, but I, I really liked in the format, like the free form format with, without a time limit because then I can actually get into a, a flow and actually work on something useful um, and actually commit something in the end and publish it and not stop working on it and have it sitting around uncommitted and unfinished <laughs> because that, happens with, <laughs> that happened with the work I did on the first three live streams, I think. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that happens. Yeah. Um, but that's that. 
But did you get um, any more comments? Did people chat or did you just see that five people were um, popping by? Yeah, there was uh, there was a little bit of activity in this uh, in the chat as well. Um, like I think two people chimed in. One was just like "Hi, bye," <laughs> but uh, um, one person stuck around. I think for most of the stream and actually commented on stuff, commented on stuff that I was doing and asked questions, and that was kind of nice. Uh, of course, it always happens with the delay and such, um, but but still, it was good. There were good questions, and it was like nice to actually start discussing things I'm doing with people. So I, I am hoping to do more of this in the future, because um, like four, I see more than two and stuff like that. Maybe maybe the end result will be better um, just by by live streaming it. That would be cool. Yeah, because you have to think when people start asking, you have to think through what you're doing in a different way than when you are coding alone. It's like pair programming a light in some way. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's true. By the way, that's the other thing I want to try on on the stream at some point, like just do a pair programming session with someone and live stream it. I have a feeling that it might burn my my computer to the ground, just like compute wise with like streaming the the streaming the pair programming session just for the pair programming tool and then recording that and uploading that to YouTube or whatever. So we see. <laughs> I can already notice that things get super slow while live streaming. So maybe this will work or maybe it will not work at all, but would be worth a try. And what were you using again to stream? Uh, I'm using Ecamm Live um, mm. to stream and uh, I'm using Tuple for, for the pay programming stuff. So mm. we see. I mean, maybe it's just a matter of like, doing screen sharing, just like sharing the screen without like being able to edit from both parties like we did. Um, maybe that's already good enough, but I mean, worth a try. You um, could also just buy a new computer. Of course. Yeah, that's that's the obvious solution. <laughs> or, or maybe even a second one. Like I noticed that some of the pro live streamers are actually using a different computer for the stream than they're using for the one to work with. So maybe I should do that. <laughs> streaming is expensive <laughs> yeah i'm really i'm really trying to not hire some of those key lights or one of those key lights <laughs> i i bought one of those i know i know and a lot of people had some nice comments about them and i'm still think like i'm still considering it but i set a like internal goal of getting to at least 10 live streams before i buy anything <laughs> You can let me like 10 live streams with five people. Then you can buy a key light. Yeah, something like that. That would be good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I must well, say, though, that I don't use my or I use mine, but I don't think it's that uh, big of a difference uh, because it's mm. a little too close. So my desk is a little narrow. So or not. Yeah, not that deep i guess yeah. so it kind of comes so so close to my face that when i get it up to the brightness that i need it my face is glaring yeah so then i would have to yeah, go like, put on makeup to stream which is like no go <laughs> for me yeah then it's like too much too much preparation involved <laughs> so i don't yeah end up not doing it yeah mm -hmm. i noticed one of my problems with my setup right now is that i'm sitting right next to a window and if I don't close the blinds, like one one half of my face gets super bright and then my camera gets super confused and it starts flickering because it's constantly trying to adjust, adjust the exposure setting and it's just super weird. So I, I have to figure out something out with the lighting because, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't really work well yet. But yeah. But then you get a new also, camera. <laughs> yeah, then you need to get a new camera, and then you kind of need a new house. Oh, I don't. I definitely need a new, <laughs> definitely need a new house. Um, but uh, let's not talk about that. <laughs> yeah. After starting to live stream, I was like, I need more rooms. This is not enough. Uh, you need a like, dedicated I could, studio. I need a studio. <laughs> That's exactly what I need right now. It's a corner of my living room. Um, and I can hear that there's people on my door. 
So I'm going to see if they give up. But if not, I have to leave. Um, <laughs> but. Yeah. Um, any more updates? Any more updates? The only other thing I, I want to mention is that I I feel pretty exhausted these days. Um, I can tell in my productivity, like everything takes way longer. And I feel like I'm out of mental energy and creativity just is a chore like it doesn't it doesn't come natural anymore so um i i I will probably be around for this for next week's recording but then i'll take two weeks off and we're already making plans of just getting getting out of the house for a week or two and uh seeing other stuff and traveling a little bit and i'm trying to stay away from work or the plan is to stay away from work as much as possible but I feel like useless is in a weird spot where it's big enough that I that staying away for two weeks is probably impossible, <laughs> but still too small to for someone else to pick up my my responsibilities during those two day uh, two weeks. So I'm actually feeling a little bit bad about thinking about taking time off, and then we'll probably feel bad about taking time off. <laughs> Um, so I don't know. It's a little bit weird. Yeah, I'm gonna say to you, take the time off. <laughs> yeah, of course. Like you but said to me, because like, I'm I'm gonna take next week off, and I was like, I'm gonna bring my microphone, and you were like, Well, maybe you can, maybe you should just sit this one out and take your vacation. And then I thought about yeah. it, and I was like, Yes, I will. I will take my vacation um, and not bring my microphone into the Norwegian mountains. Um, and I think you should do some of the the same yeah i i should but i'm not sure like how much like what mode like there's no way i can leave my computer at home that's just yeah. not going to happen um, but I, and I would probably I, have to do some customer support mm -hmm. but i have to figure out a way to to limit it to just like an hour in the mornings or every two days or something like that so it doesn't take over it doesn't take over everything. And then they're, they're just hoping that nothing breaks because like in my last two vacations, we had major problems. In of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. That's um, how it goes. I think personally, though, even though you didn't ask for my advice, I'm just going to give it to you. Uh, I really enjoy a vacation when it is defined as a vacation because as long as you go away, a vacation at home is harder because then it's like, okay, what am I supposed to do when I'm not working and the desk is there and, and nothing else is planned? But if you go on a vacation and you have kind of clear expectations with the people you are going with that, oh, I'm going to work 9 to 11 or 9 to 12 or 7 to 10 or whatever. Like I usually do two or three hours. If that is like clearly set expectations, then I can do those hours and know that I do have some progress if that's what I need, or in your case, like you could do user support, you could, or you could just have those hours in case something breaks. And then when that is done, you can go and do what, you know, vacation things. Yeah. And it, for me, at least it feels like a true vacation. It's not like I'm lying to myself because I've done this several times and I've been like, am I lying to myself? Like, does this feel like a vacation? And I feel like it absolutely does feel like a vacation because when you then kind of close your laptop and put it in the bag, everything is so vacation-y that you kind of, you. I forget about whatever I was doing almost right away and I'm in vacation mode, which wouldn't happen if you tried to do like a stay vacation, as I said, because then yeah. you don't get that kind of environment switch. But going away, but I, but it's key to not be... In my experimentation, it's key that it's not being like, I'll work when there's like downtime or, um, you know, I'll see if I can put some, you know, put some hours in at night. Or I need it to be like very, um, very like specific times and also very like communicated to the people around me so that everybody knows that's going to happen because then I can relax, they can relax. And, and often if you go away with other people, like then they can get three hours to themselves where they can do something like even though you go on vacation together you might not want to be together 24 hours and then they can yeah. get you know an excuse to do something they like that is vacationy or they could work 
Um, so that's my vacation advice. I even have a whole YouTube video of my last summer's vacation. If somebody wants to see, oh, I we're going. <laughs> I'm going to check that one out. Um, but actually, that's a good. That's a good tip. Like, I, I, I guess I figured out the scheduling thing, like just planning it um, myself, but like being explicit, explicit about it and talking about it with everyone that's around is probably a good idea because then it the expectations are clear and nobody gets upset because I'm I'm working for an hour or so. Because I feel like there's no way I will not be able to there's no way I will be able to not work at all. So there will be some, some, I have to do something during the course of those two weeks or so, but I also feel like I need, just need to rest and mm -hmm. do as little as possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I think also it's good to find, figure out how to do those things because when you are a small or medium sized business owner, it is different. Like you, you don't take a vacation like a normal employee. You can't just yeah. leave your badge or whatever at, and then not go in, and that then you don't have to think about it. It is your business, and of course, you don't want to, you know, leave your computer at home and everything crashes, and don't take your phone, and then you don't have a business <laughs> when you come back. It's like no, that is not like a good thing to do either. You know, not, not for your mental health, not yeah. for your financial. <laughs> health i don't know <laughs> so i think we have to figure out ways where we can do that because then we can take more vacations but maybe not like 100 percent vacations that other people do but then maybe we end up with you know two or three months where we do this kind of workation setup and that will give us the rest we need while if you're an employee you then do your like at least in Norway, you do your like three weeks in the summer, super seriously, and they and then neighbors will be like, "Oh, are you working?" And I'm like, "Yes, I'm working three hours a day." Um, but then I'll do that in all of August too, when everybody else is back at uh, work full time. So it's like it's not you know you don't have to feel sorry for me. It's just a different way of of um, working and resting. Yeah, yeah, that's a good. That's a good one. Well, we'll, well see how it goes. So you have to work take your vacation. Workation. You have to take your. It's like it's next week a uh, vacation or a vacation for you. Uh, I don't think I'll bring my laptop because I don't have anything that could break break per se. <laughs> now that I'm saying it, I'm like maybe I should bring my laptop. Um, <laughs> It's not a full week, so I think it'll, it will be fine. And it's also in Norway. If something like catastrophic happens, I will just have to go home. Uh, I don't think that will happen. No, so it's going to be a proper vacation because, but it's Sunday to Wednesday, and we are going to ride. Me and a friend, we're going to be riding horses from cabin to cabin in the Norwegian mountain. Nice. And then somebody that will. Cool. Yes. Oh. Oh my God. And. It's obviously going to rain the whole time because that's what it did last year. It's been the best summer ever. <laughs> and then now that I'm going to go on this um, ho horses in the mountains adventure, uh, it looks like the weather is going to turn last because I went with her to another type of horse uh, horseback riding vacation last year and it rained so much, but we still enjoyed it. But I've never been so wet in my life. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so we're riding from uh, cabin to cabin and then the organizers will then drive them the bags and everything from cabin to cabin. So it feels like it would be maybe less risky to leave the, leave the laptop at home instead of having other people like handle the laptop around in the, in the, in the region uh, mountains. So super excited about that. And also all I will stay home, my partner. So that is a, the key could do some sort of, um, crisis management if anything should happen but yeah. you know i don't have i don't have a product business up there with yours yet so i can still leave it at home yeah uh that, that was nice when it was too small and nobody used it <laughs> <laughs> what was your I favorite honestly... number of users what like what what was your favorite number of customers that's a hard question, but I feel like things are more enjoyable when it's low, like a lower number. <laughs> um, 
I guess product-wise, working on it was most enjoyable when we had no customers at all. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting um, the honest truth here, everyone is listening. It's like you don't want customers for your SaaS. Just just make if you it wanna, for yourself. Yeah, if you want to just enjoy it and have a lot of fun and just never don't start selling it because yeah, once you start selling it, like things change. <laughs> but I guess it's it goes from being a hobby to being work, right? Yeah. It's it's not like you quit your job and then start a SaaS and don't have to work. Like it's still yeah. I mean, you still have to work. You just have a little more little more say over when and what and all of those things. Yeah, but, it, but that's but that's the key. It's still work. It's still work. <laughs> and, and if I you're not the, not careful, you create a pretty miserable job for yourself. So exactly. Yeah. You have to be very vigilant to be a good boss to yourself because it's it's really hard. Like you said, like I can't take vacation on my own. Like it's easy to um it's easy to become not such a good <laughs> not such a good boss. Um, yeah. Yeah. Totally true. But I think this is a little bit why I want to focus on kind of the the um, Queen Ray kind of business, which is more kind of service and courses and those kinds of things as my kind of main uh, main income in the next years. And then I can keep out more of a, I have customers, but then I can keep it more on that kind of like side project hustle hobby ish. Yeah. Um, prolong that stage a little bit um, yeah because i don't Not have to idea. grow it i don't have <laughs> to grow it <laughs> but at some point i should otherwise it's just a hobby right yeah yeah but hobbies are good well, yeah oh of course <laughs> <laughs> i mean i i think we we talked about this with brian in one of the past episodes it's, it's okay to have like a a side project that's purely a a hobby and has no intention of ever making money and i think the important part is just to be intentional about it intentional about it and not treat it like a product even though you want it to be a hobby or the other way around so yeah or if you're the founder that. entrepreneur kind of person just because you're starting kind of sewing bags for your friends as presents, it doesn't have to turn into business. <laughs> yeah. Like I think a lot of, of people with, you know, the the kind of entrepreneurial founder mindset, like look, see business opportunities everywhere and then kind of tries to make every hobby into something that they can monetize. And then you don't have any hobbies left and you need yes. your hobbies, right? You need something yes. that you are just okay at and enjoy and all of those things it doesn't have to be have to become a business i think that's um yeah that's an important point totally agreed yeah so i guess let's wrap it for this week yes um, so talk to you and well i just realized we'll probably not talk we will be not we will not be talking for a month or so <laughs> yeah because then it will be benedict and brian next week and then it will be me and brian for a week or two and then you'll be back yes and then i'll be back so uh yeah have a good horseback riding vacation and uh <laughs> yes <laughs> see you soon <laughs> bye bye bye